So I'm on Trace again. I'm going to take him down the road today. So he's been good getting on in the arena. He's been so-so getting on out here, but it's getting better. So let's see how it is today. So I'm going to ask him to go forward. And look at that. So the other times he shook his head, he wouldn't go forward. Now he's just going. So he's getting he's getting some work ethic. He's like, all right, I get this. Now I haven't taken him down the road except for hand walking him. And that was a while ago, a couple weeks, I think. So we'll see. A lot of times they don't want to go out because of the goats when we get up here, they can smell them as I'm going down the hill. Okay, so usually the first time I go out, all the horses start balking around now and then they don't want to go out. Let's see how it goes. And of course they get used to it because we just do it over and over again. So he's seeing a horse that's on the left. So it's normal, they all stop here because the goats are on the right behind the bushes. And they're not always there, but the smell is. Good boy. So I know the goats are on the right, so I'm going to keep my left leg on him. He's just taking in the smells. Got a bug on you. So at least he walked forward down the hill. That was good. So I'm just going to let him look for a minute. Somebody's out there. Okay, let's see if we can go. There's people. Look, if they go by it, then we won't die. See how that works? Come on. Hi. Come on. You got this. Come on. Good job. Now sometimes that, that's all it takes is somebody else walking by, but he didn't see them walk by down here. And he's like, that's where the goats are. So the goats are off here on the right. But sometimes they're in their house and sometimes they're not. Sometimes the dog comes flying over and churches the fence. So I don't see any goats, but he can definitely smell them. And nobody likes bushes, do they? So I don't mind that he's going down the hill a little fast. He's sure-footed and I just want him to move. So I don't need him to go slow because it might stop. So let's move out a little bit. Oh, there's a car. So I like to turn around to face the cars. Instead of having them come up behind you in the beginning. He's pulling, so I'm just holding. Now we can chase the car. Just like we chased the goat. Again, even though he's been down here, it's been a little bit of time, so I won't be surprised if he stops and we have to wait to look by stuff. The cows are usually on the right, but they're not there right now, so we got a flag. Boy. So far, he's doing pretty good. So I'm just trying to keep him moving forward a little bit. And sometimes you go too slow, they, they just look at everything and they find more and more things to spook it. Let's do a little leg yielding to occupy his brain some. Now that's why it's helpful to teach him these things in the arena so you got some tools to use out here. Good boy. That guy's lost apparently. 
Good job. Come on. Now there's goats usually up that way. And I can't see them from here, but it doesn't mean they're not there. So he's doing a safety check. Okay, let's try going. That wasn't very much. Come on. I don't see the goats, I see some machines. And maybe the goats are in the shade. Can you keep going, buddy? Oh, the goats are there and they're up by the gate. So who knows if he can see them or not, but he's now nervous where he wasn't nervous, so it probably is the goats. Come on. So, and I did talk to the owner. He hasn't been ridden alone, so. So he's not scared. His heart's not beating or anything like that yet, but he's not sure. Oh boy. So he was like, let's run past it. And I was like, yeah, sounds good to me. Let's go. And then he's like, no, I got scared. So see, it's much different when you're on the ground leading them versus you're on their back. So I want to push him, of course, but if he's petrified, I'm not going to push him. I'm going to help him. So that was good. You saw him spook, but all he did was spook in place. And what a wonderful horse you are to do that. Right? We can't totally stop them from spooking. We can help them and we can teach them. What's up there now? There's people in the house probably laughing at you. Like, what's that baby doing? That's what happens. It's go, stop, go, stop. And every day it's a little bit less stopping and more going. But this is normal. Some are braver, some are spookier. But for going alone and not having that much work, I still think he's doing great. He's like, do you see that quail? I saw it. Oh, Tracy, Tracy. Come on. Let's go in their driveway if possible. A car's coming. Okay, so I'm not pushing it forward, so I'm going back to this driveway. Come on. Oh boy. Hi, how are you? That looked really good. <laughs> it's his first time down the road. <laughs> really? That's not the one I saw you on last time. Huh? No, I hand walked one down here, but it always starts like this, like they're petrified and then they do okay. Did you go across the way? Too? Yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, buddy. Oh. No! 
There's a goat up my left. Come on. You got this. Good job. You're okay. Good boy. Hi, buddy. Good guys. Are you coming through the little gate? Oh, okay. Well, it's open, so I'd, I'll lock it, but... Oh, I just didn't want to lock it if you weren't, cut. you know, if you were coming through this. We'll see if he figures it out. Good boy. <laughs> You're okay. No, you're okay. Come on. Good job. Good job. Let's turn around. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Whatever you are, yeah. Yeah, he's a good boy. All right, we'll see how he goes. Thank you so much. So we're doing two things. We're trying to get him going. Can get somewhere. Also, it helps me if I have to do a lot of stopping later to save time. Oh, I got peachy in here or something, some dogs. You see, he's gaining very well. Overall, I think he did really well. Then we got a little speed bump. Make sure he's paying attention. Good boy. Okay. So I don't know if he's ever been ridden down the road before. I doubt it from the way it started out. And we bumped to the farmland. Stop coming. Good boy, I know it's a lot of stimulus. But he's doing very well. So there's a little bouncy, so I'm just going to lift his head up a little. There we go, that's all I had to do to fix him. So we got little ponies up here on the right. Yeah. Oh boy. Good job, you're okay. So there, he's a little antsy, so you see his head up. He's like, what are those guys gonna do? I know, did they tell you stories about ponies? They're always making trouble. Oh, we got the flag blowing next to us. There's one on each side of the street. Good boy. You're a good guy. Yeah. Now we want to stay long enough that he sees what it is, but not so long it does something to scare him. That's the hard part when it's things moving. You want to let them look at it and then go before it starts, you know, get caught in the wind or something. And so, that's another reason you see the flag on the left. I moved over to the right to give him more space. There's sprinklers up on the right, which you can't see. 
Now what do we got? Weed whacker or something. Not the head. Oh boy. He's like, oh my god, I'm in between sprinkler and something else. So we'll see how it goes as we get closer up here. You know, and horses have usually heard all this stuff, but they're at home with their buddies. And when they're out alone and they hear this stuff, it can be a totally different story. Especially when the object is above them, they're always more nervous. Because where do predators come from? Usually up above. Oh, let's pick that up on the way there. So, if it's below them, they're usually not as scared of it. Again, he just picks up speed, but I'm okay with that. But he still might get up here and slam on the brake. So, it's on the right, so keep your left leg in rain and get on the course. To the back, make sure your reins are short. He's okay with the noise, but you never know if they're going to do something more because they're not paying attention to me. Good boy. Right here comes a car. I'm going to try to get out of their way if possible. Chase the car. When you push things away with your horse, they get braver. So if a bike, person, something, they go by, they're scared of if you can get behind it and follow it for a while, that usually helps. And you might not be able to follow close. You might have to follow really far behind in the beginning and then over time you can get closer and closer to the object. Now he's got a fast gait, and it's quite smooth because he does a fox trot, and then he kind of does in between a fox trot and a saddle gait, and then he does a saddle gait. I like it all. What a talent it's worth. So horses usually feel better when their feet are moving, so let's jump up this. So if they're very nervous holding them back is you know hard they want to get out of there so if you can let them move their feet even if you're side passing or moving their hind quarters just something they usually tolerate that better than you just trying to hold them still that's usually when they rear up or have hissy fits so if you, if you can find space that's why you always see me moving out of the way and i'm kind of looking around seeing how much space i have so if I can give the horse space so I can move around if it has an issue, they're much happier. And I always try to get out of the road because what happens? The car starts to pass you and that's when the horse starts spinning around. So best, if you can, just get out of the road. I think this would make a good neighborhood horse. <laughs> Thing. Fine with that. There's lots of things going on or that we're passing that I'm sure you can't see. There's this big green hammock looking chair thing. I mean, that's scary. Now there's a dog over there. Baby crying. Pack a word here, but we're not here now. Oh, good oh boy. Stop for a second. Okay, let's turn around. So I don't know what happened to Alpaca, but they're not there, so we can't show them to you. So turning around did really well. 
a lot of horses get super excited when you turn towards home. Okay. And if you're wearing, oh, I don't know if you can see his neck. He rubbed his mane, then I put an MTG on it to help it grow back, and put him in a different stall. And he's still putting his head out and now rubbing. So now all the silver from the bars have gotten on him. Who knows if the MTG added to that, but. And he doesn't have any grass by him now. He just um, likes to put his head out and get every little tiny piece of hay, even when there's hay outs hay in his stall. He puts his head outside it and eats the outside stuff. So that's the hard part. Some horses you can only do too much. And then you think, well, you could put up like cage stuff or you know that other kind of fencing. But then some goofy horses stick their feet through those and get their shoes stuck in them. So, like I'd rather have them run their mane off than have their foot stuck in the fence all night or something. Okay, so. Good job. Trace, you're a great horse. Just a really good horse. I'm sure if he was following another horse, he'd probably go anywhere. See, now we have time to stop if you want to look at stuff. So. <sighs> Good boy. Now I just nudged him and he went, but again, if he was scared, he would have just stayed there when I nudged him. So he kind of tests. Like, Will you go now? Oh, there's a crazy, artsy eagle up there. Huge. There's usually horses down there, but I don't see any. Even though he jumps and spooks and does stuff, that's just a young horse thing, you know. He just needs work and experience to be good. Because if they don't get enough work, they get cuckoo. You know, the horses need work or jobs and get their energy out. Again, remember, I didn't just take him out here. I lunged him first. I lunged him over poles because I'm trying to make him stronger and better with his feet and better on hills. So I did that for know, like five minutes and he got tired pretty easily. But you see how much energy he has out here? Are you nervous? So sometimes the horses will fake you out. So if you've had a bad time with your horse or keep spooking and stuff, uh, try to get more energy out before you ride it. So that was good. We got pretty close because we have a side to go to that. Here's football now. It's starting to get just a little bouncy, so I'm going to lift his head up see if you hear a difference. Hear the change in his feet? I'm going to let him go again. Starting to get bouncy. Here are the feet. Now listen. And all I'm doing is picking his head up half open and leaning back. And that's how I'm getting him back into his gait. Then downhill makes him a little more swingy or more towards the pace. So as we go downhill, he might be okay. Now we're back by the weed whacker or whatever it is. If he's scared and we get a little lateral, we might even get a, a rack instead of a saddle gate. We're going to keep his head up. Step back. It can help us with gait, but also keep us safer. Oh, 
forward. So there, while we were passing that thing, he did, he got a little hump in his back. So when you feel that, you get their head up, because you know, they might buck. He didn't, but if that guy hit a tree or something with that, he might have. You want to be prepared. Okay, so now we're going to get off and kick the poop off. Okay, stay. Okay, so we kicked the poo off. Now let's see how he is for getting back on. Okay. I did pretty good. He's round, so it's hard. Not pull the saddle around. Okay, come on. So this is a great hill to uh, do a saddle gate or a rack up, so let's try. So watch him, but listen to his footfall. Energy. Well, he wasn't very speedy. <laughs> Maybe I'll get something closer to home. Go flag on the right, flag on the left. See, that was normal to flag this move. That's a, ooh, that noise inside the garage got me going. So now his gate's better. Remember, if they spook, you can usually get a saddle gate or a rack. You start being happy, your horse is spooking, your horse stops spooking. So when they start spooking, their head comes out, they invert their back, and they usually scoot their butt underneath them, and that's why you get a good saddle gait or a rack, because it kind of just sets them up for the correct gait. And so again, they do that when they spook, and they're not crazy. You can use that to help you get the gait. And then I have seriously seen many horses stop spooking because the people just start gating all the time when they spook, and the horse is like, well, that's not what I wanted. We just wanted to get out of here and not gate. So this is another thing that might help you. Well, there's lots of caution tape or something up there. All these weird plastic farm things. You know, he's fox trotting downhill a little bit and it was stable and then it got a little bit bouncy, so that's why I slowed him down. there got a little bouncy and it went more not towards the pace but towards the, the trot now we got a little electric song the only way your horses get used to this stuff is exposure either you walking them past the stuff or you riding them or somebody else doing it for you it's great when they're used to it because then you run into the stuff on the trail and you're like, oh, don't worry about it. He's already seen that a thousand times. He's fine. When you go through a neighborhood, there's tons of stuff. There's all these people usually working outside the yard, so you have to expose your horse to the weed whacker, saws, cars backfiring, all that stuff. But 
he's not we've been working up to this it's not like he arrived and i immediately took him out here he arrived we did all the groundwork we did arena work we walked down the road a bunch of times i grazed on where by the busy road i did that over and over until he was pretty good about it. and then i started riding around the barn and i started riding around the trail and then today i came down here so it was a progressive way to get there you know just building blocks you do it too quick and overwhelm them and don't prepare them at all we saw trash cans on our street we saw the goats i walked up to all that stuff in the beginning and now i was like okay let's put your routine together and let's do it because you got to go home soon so we gotta make sure you know your little routine and you've seen all this stuff you're good okay i don't know if he'll get the gate but we'll see so he was dancing around when we went through this before. That's okay, that guy was behind us, the cars, he had energy. So the worst thing he's doing right now is just pulling on me. So let's see if we can flick it up with this. Stepping on rocks and doing all sorts of stuff as we're trying to get over to this gate. So he's having a little temper tantrum, but he did so good with everything else, so that's okay. He's like, Gay, I don't think I can do this. I'm like, Can you just try? So having a stick is helpful because look, I couldn't reach that with my hand. And so now we gotta turn around, we're not done yet. So he knows how to leg yield and side pass, but we didn't do any gates, did we? Okay. So he actually let me shut it, he let me do a lot. Now it's, can we close, lock it? Can you get over there a little? Come on. Now we're in the tree. Can you go forward? Oh, what a good boy. Well, Hey, we got it. That's impressive. Right? I think you're the first young one that actually went up to the gate. Even though he was messing around, he stayed with me and he said, okay, I don't want to do it, but geez, gay, I'll do it. It's a hard road to get across. Okay, let's run. They come flying down that road like 50 or 60 miles per hour, sometimes faster. Thank you. Good boy. Do you want to rack back home? No, that's okay. I don't see the ghost. Oh, oh, there they are. But uh, who knows if it was the car behind us that made him do that. He went sideways and he jumped up a little bit. Still not bad for uh, a young horse. So now we're in a gully. Can you get us out? Come on. We got the goat right there. Hi, buddy. Your friend comes over and visits every day. Okay. So remember me working on the gully? Good thing I did because now he got us out of that. He was kind of stuck in it. Now 
Now we're going home and we're going a little fast, but we're not close, close to home yet. I'm okay with that because I want to work on his gait. And look how fast and smooth it is now. And didn't have to do anything crazy to get it. He's barefoot, no special angles, just talent, practice, patience. Goats are going to be up on our left. So there's the goats in the field. One, two, I don't know, six, something like that. So now his routine is, you know, he gets a couple days off, then the first day back, I run him around, and then I lunge him after that. Even though he ran around, just to make sure, I lunge him over the poles, work out his muscles, and then I ride him in the arena. And the next day I rode him around the barn, and I went up on the trail a little bit, then today I came out here, so then tomorrow we'll try to take a, either go back in the arena or another trail ride and then, you know, do something different the day after. So in the beginning, we were in the arena all the time. Now I'm alternating what we're doing so he doesn't get bored, so he gets exposed, and so he'll be able to gate anywhere, in the arena, on the trail, down the road. And that way they use different muscles, they don't get as tired as when they're doing the same exact thing. Now I have tools with all the stuff we taught him in the arena. Now I can use out here when he goes sideways, when he's moving his hindquarter or his shoulders, I can catch it because now he knows to turn on the forehand, turn on the haunches, he knows how to side pass, he knows how to steer, he knows how to back up, he knows, you know, leg yield and serpentine. So I have lots of tools in my pocket with him that I can use because if you don't teach the horse those things, even though you know how to do it, they don't know how to do it, so when you ask them to do it, it will not work out well. You both have to know it, and you both have to practice it, so when you need it, the horse understands and you know how to do it. Now there's one goat over here by itself, and then there's sheep and a donkey over there. Oh, and we got the dog, the barking dog is up here. Here he comes. I heard you, and we got some goats in here. He looks like, oh, he laid back down. He's like, yeah, it's just gay. So this horse is very smooth now. And occasionally he'll get a little bounce in his step when he's going back towards his fox trot. But it's really easy to get him to do a saddle gate now. Now that's okay, because it was somebody at their house. It's okay. Go boy. So all they're doing is something with their car. That stuff happens, right? We were going along good. He was great. And he spooked. But what did he do? The most important thing. He spooked. He stopped. He stayed there. He didn't spin. He didn't bolt. He didn't take off. He's like, what is it? I'm like, it's a car. He's like, you sure? And then he jumped again. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I'm still scared. I go, it's okay. Let's just go. On. So, again, that stuff happens with young horses. It happens with older horses. They're horses, right? So, now look at him. Now he's back to normal. That's just what happens. So, you're going to have stuff like that happen. So, pick your trails wisely. Pick who you ride with wisely. So it goes smoothly. Okay. All right, we made it back. He was great. We're going to tie him up for a little bit. And that's our episode of training for the day.